Hello friends, I am Brandi Agerbeck of Loosetooth.com and I help you reclaim drawing as your best thinking tool so you can see and shape your life and your work in new ways. Now my first floral arranging lesson I released right around Thanksgiving so you could have some beautiful blooms on your table and today I want to return with uh, another just very simple demo actually simpler than the first one uh, talking about how to arrange these three particular flowers I have again I know this isn't about drawing but this, this is about color it is about beauty it is about composition and uh, this is something that helps me enjoy some uh, gorgeous aesthetics a gorgeous gorgeous color and shape in my life and so I just want to share this with you now I'm not a professional florist I'm probably doing things some things wrong if you are and you want to give me advice I welcome it because this is just what I know what I learned from my mom and uh, what I like to bring into my life now in uh, just before this Valentine's Day. So um, again, if you want flowers for yourself to celebrate uh, you, if you want flowers for your sweetie and celebrate them, this is how to very simply arrange flowers. And I've got a vase. In this case, I've got um, this beautiful sort of three lobed vase I got years ago. I think it's CB2. Um, and this particular vase I chose because um, there's not a huge number of blooms here and not a huge number of stems and this gives me a chance to even things out here in this shape. Um, sometimes these kind of vases are called tulip vases and yes indeed tulips look freaking fantastic in this kind of shape. Um, so if you're looking for something that's got some sort of narrow openings look for a tulip vase and that will probably head you in the right direction. So very simply these are flowers I picked up at my local grocery. We'll take them out, let them make their crinkly noises. And um, like I said in the first video I'm really thinking about what are the different colors I want to use and what are the different shapes I want to use. And it just happens our grocery store has three, uh, three bundles of flowers for $12, you know, so it's not super expensive in our particular case here in Chicago and um, an opportunity to show you how I chose those three, those three flowers and how they're going to work together in my arrangement. So simply we've got some yellow mums. So these are some small yellow mums. You can see those beautiful blooms right there. And um, what I liked about this was they're, they're yellow, a gorgeous yellow color of course, but they have these nice dark centers. So I just thought that was an interesting um, interesting combination that actually tied together the other two flowers. The second flower I have is Scabo Scabiosa. <laughs> and honestly, I think I've only seen these kind of flowers maybe once before. Um, and what I liked was this gorgeous deep, deep purple color. I'm not sure how well this is going to come across in the video, but you've got this gorgeous dark, deep purple. And I love that in the center there, I don't know if we're going to focus on that, if the camera's going to focus for us, but it's sort of like this pin cushion in the center with all these little dots. Um, so I love the round shape. I love the um, uh, texture and the color of these guys. And as you can see from one that's a little less squished, they have a similar shape to the mum in the fact that there is a round center and then the petals that crown that round center. So similar shape, but different scale, different color, and definitely a different texture from our mums. So again, we've got our mums with the dark centers. And again, those dark centers connect to the purple that are in our scabiosa. Scabiosa? That doesn't sound very pretty, but it's, they're gorgeous. Get those crinkly plastics out of the way. And then finally, we've got asters. Very, very simple, itty bitty, tiny yellow and white asters and I've got these so we get a close-up on this you can see that this is a different same kind of shape where you've got a center with crown of petals 
Um, in this case, we've got these yellow centers that connect to the first flower, the mums, and uh, white petals, which is just a fantastic neutral. Can't go wrong with white and yellow, right? So I chose these three because they all have the same shape, but they have different scales and different textures. So that's how I came up with these guys. And we have an opportunity to demonstrate a color combination, which is, we've got a handy dandy color wheel right here. And um, what we're doing today is we have got a complementary color scheme. Now, this is a little bit of weird, um, a kind of weird nuance of art speak, but this is a color wheel, the six basic colors. We've got our three primaries of red, yellow, and blue, and our three secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. So again, if you remember this from grade school, you mix yellow and red together to get orange, yellow and blue to get green, and blue and purple, blue and red to get purple. Uh, so this gives us a super, super basic color wheel. Now, there's two types of color relationships, and uh, roughly speaking, um, you could certainly kind of have a color, I could have a flower arrangement with the mums and the asters and maybe some other third yellow color. Then I'd be doing sort of a monochromatic color scheme very simple. You all stick in one, one stick to one color. These look gorgeous with white flowers. Very easy to make a flower arrangement with lots of different shapes, but all white flowers with the green of the stems. Kind of can't go wrong with that. Again, yellows would work great. Um, another color combination you can do are what's called an analogous colors, and those are the ones that are next to each other on the color wheel. So that would be if I added orange or bright green or light green to this yellow color because we've got yellow here and green going to this side, yellow here and orange going to this side. So that would create an analogous color scheme in our flower arrange arrangement. But here we're doing something that I don't do a heck of a lot, um, which is a complementary color combination, which is opposite on the color wheel. So we've got, oh, my little blue is shaking loose. Here, you can stay, just stay there, okay? Um, <laughs> we've got the primary uh, most, um, uh, populated or frequent color in the arrangement will be yellow, but opposite on the color wheel, we've got purple. Now, again, this is a super, super, super deep purple. So it, in some people's eyes, it could almost work as a black or a neutral, but it is opposite yellow on that color wheel. So we had yellow on the top and purple on the bottom. Now, the thing, weird thing about the art speak is these colors being opposite each other on the wheel. It's called complementary, uh, but they actually create a, a it's a very dy dynamic color combination. It can also create sort of like a lot of like contrast and tension. Uh, so if you think about something like red and turquoise or red and green, like a blah, or blue and red, no, not blue and red, blue and orange. <laughs> They're very bright, bright combinations, yellow and purple, very bright, bright combinations. Um, so that's what we're using here. It doesn't seem that, and you'll notice that once we finish, doesn't seem that because this is such a deep, 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 deep color. So now let's arrange these flowers. Much like you saw in the previous video, we're going to uh, cut the stems at an angle so the flowers can get a little more um, water. And I'm gonna take these bottom leaves off so that we don't have a whole lot of water below the water line. I'm sorry, a whole lot of leaves below the water line getting all um, uh, mucky in the water. Now, because I've got these three lobes here, this actually makes my arranging incredibly easy because I can basically put one of these stems in each of these four spaces. So I just put one in the center of the vase and I can put one in each of these three lobes. And what's happening is I'm using this one, which is very full. So I'm starting with what's kind of like a filler flower, something that's got a lot of breadth to it. As you can see, this takes up a lot of space, um, whereas these guys do not. They are very simply blooms with very narrow stems. So I'm gonna, it's really good to start out with a filler because it gives you a very solid base to begin with. Um, so again, when you're thinking, when you're getting flowers, you're choosing flowers, that's a great thing to keep in mind is not only color, not only shape, but as part of the shape and part of the texture, do I have something that really kind of fans out and gives me some volume and can be sort of that base or that filler to my arrangement. So what I'm doing now is I've taken off those last little stems on the bottom there. Let's see if we can get the, 
We're trying to, I don't, high contrast, it's not high contrast against my uh, gray shirt here, but um, take the bottom few off. Let's see, there you can see it. And I'm checking the height according to my vase, just by setting it next to it. And then I can tweak and trim off little bits as I go to get the kind of height I want in the vase. And always easier, well, you can always cut more off, but if you cut too far, you can't really do anything about that. So I recommend working in bits and pieces and going down uh, to, the, to the height you want for your vase. So again, same kind of idea. I'm cutting at an angle. Again, give a little more surface area for these stems to slurp up more water. And I've got, again, I'm just taking the bottom pieces off of these. I've got a lot of these little bits. I'm probably gonna do a little itty bitty bud vase to go along with these little asters, these little itty bitty asters, um, so I'm not wasting them. Like the, what I often do is if I have little bits or a flower, flower head breaks off, you can make a teeny tiny arrangement and these are super awesome on a vanity, in your bathroom, or on your nightstand. Um, it's just awfully sweet. So now I have got four blooms in the four spaces in my vase. So those act as gorgeous filler. I may use more, I may not, but I think this is a good stopping point because I've got sort of each of those four areas. And I don't have a huge amount of space for the stems, so I wanna make sure I don't want this all crammed into this face. Next, I'm going to move into the next most full. And here you can see there's like a little stem there, so that's a case where we lost a bloom at the top. Um, I'm gonna trim that off so it looks a little less obvious that some flower head fell off. And I'm going to, um, again, take the bottom leaves off just to help keep it from getting all murky in the water. In this particular case, you can't see that because we have an opaque vase, but definitely if you're using a glass vase, that just makes it a little nicer for a little longer. Of course, these are organic materials. They're gonna degrade, they're gonna break down because that's life. <laughs> um, but that's an opportunity just, you know, uh, slow that down a little bit again by taking those bottom leaves off of the stems and cutting at an angle. And I'm doing the same thing where I'm just putting these blooms in each of those four spaces, the center and then one of each in the lobes. Now, I'm using the same kind of idea even if it was a round vase, I'd be kind of crisscrossing my stems. You definitely saw that in the first video, um, which I will link to below. And this gives you an opportunity to um, you know, definitely this kind of shape of a vase is kind of dummy proof because it's got such clear delineations um, that you can make your arrangement. So right now I've got three stems and those three lobes of the mums, the yellow mums, alongside the four stems of the aster, which works as our really lovely filler filling out that space. And... I will do one in the center. Now, I don't think, I would like to go a little higher in the center, but unfortunately, when I needed to transport my flowers from my uh, home to my studio here, I ended up um, cutting these down, and so I can't actually get quite as tall as I want in this arrangement. So again, you can always trim down, but you can't add it back, so that's just the deal. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll, I'll set it in this vase, and it's not hitting all the way to the bottom. So it's important because I, I can tell that this particular bloom is kind of floating above. It's probably about here in my vase. I just have to make sure I keep my water, my va the water in my vase high enough that it will get wa the water it needs. And now again, we've got four mums and four asters. Um, I'm debating whether to put more in. I feel like this is a nice distribution Again, because I'm using my vase as my guide, so I'll pause. Again, I've got two more stems of aster or mums I could put in there. We're gonna put those aside. Now, I'm gonna put in these gorgeous guys. Now, here's what's tricky about this, is we have five stems and four general spaces in this vase. So I definitely know I'm gonna do a stem per lobe. Again, and that, that the way that this shape works in this vase. And it's kind of funny because I use this, when I talk about shapes and I need a standard kind of placeholder shape, this is kind of the shape I draw, which is like a blobby thing that's got kind of three lobes on it. It's just kind of the placeholder. Um, so I like that my vase goes along with that. 
It's just a lovely coincidence because I've had this vase for years and then later drew started drawing the shapes that way. Next stem, again, I'm doing the stems at an angle, and the, this is that scabiosa. Terrible name. It's got to be pincushion something, right? And I'm just putting one per lobe. Now, I know that because I'm going to have an extra stem in the center, um, I want to create some depth. So like this one, I created much lower, knowing that up here somewhere, <laughs> if you can see this, so here, this is set a bit lower. I'll end up probably putting another purple guy right around there, again, to create some depth in the arrangement. And here we go with the third lobe. Let me check my height. Just trim it off a tiny bit. I will put my next flower in. And these particular ones, you can see they kind of angle a little bit here. So they come straight up and then angles. Um, I did make sure I got some that were healthy and not bowing a lot. Um, one thing you can do is if you had one that was very bent, often you can prop up a bloom on one of the other flower stems in the vase. So that's a great way. Don't worry if something's a little saggy. Sometimes a saggy looks great. Sometimes it creates this beautiful, robust, fecund arrangement. Um, but if it's just drooping too far, use another stem to hold that stem up. And now I'm placing my last two, and I'm gonna go both in the middle-ish, not the dead center, but sort of creating, again, this depth uh, by having different heights. And my last little guy here is going to go also center-ish, a little higher. Now, I think that looks pretty freaking awesome. So now I've got this arrangement of these three colors, and you can see that there's a nice... Uh, um, it's simple, it's just three flowers, but you can see there's a lot of depth uh, even though all three types of flowers have a very simple, similar round shape with a, with a center, some kind of center, and then a crown of petals, that they're very different shapes, they're different densities, they're different colors, and uh, that works really well together. So that's a way to look at flowers at the grocery store and think, huh, how can I put these together? Um, certainly you can always buy a pre-made bouquet. I'm not going to knock you. Fresh flowers are awesome. But I share these videos so you can learn a little bit about different shapes, different colors, so you can choose arrangements for yourself. Because I get a heck of a lot of joy from this, and I would love for you to do so too. So that is today's arrangement. Right now my water level is pretty low in this vase. Don't fill it up too high. Um, I've got my flower food and my water lukewarmish, so I can dissolve the flower food in it. It's a little bit low right now, and then once you make the arrangement, you can top off the water, but you don't want to get it too high and end up spilling water all over your desk, so or your table, or your whatever, your counter, wherever you're working. So that is today's arrangement. And uh, again, this one's pretty simple, but I think it's pretty gorgeous. And again, we're using a complementary color scheme. These colors of yellow and purple opposite each other on the color wheel. So I certainly hope you found this useful. I welcome your comments and your questions, and uh, thank you so much for watching.